الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي هدى والصلاة والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى خصوصا على سيد الرسل وخاتم الأنبياء وعلى آله وأصحابه الذين اجتبى أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وَإِذْ تَقُولُ لِلَّذِي أَنْعَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَأَنْعَمْتَ عَلَيْهِ أَمْسِكْ عَلَيْكَ زَوْجَكَ وَاتَّقِ اللَّهَ وَتُخْفِي فِي نَفْسِكَ مَا اللَّهُ مُبْدِيهِ وَتَخْشَى النَّاسِ وَاللَّهُ أَحَقُّ أَنْ تَخْشَى فلما قضى زيد منها وطرا زوجناك هالك لا يكون على المؤمنين حرج لكي لا يكون على المؤمنين حرج في أزواج أدعيائهم إذا قضوا منهن وطرا وكان أمر الله مفعولا ما كان على النبي من حرج فيما فرض الله له سنة الله في الذين خلوا من قبل وكان أمر الله قدرا مقدورا صدق الله العظيم the love that we have for our children many times we may take that just as a religious matter but really the love of children it's not only a religious matter. It is a nature of a human being also. Regardless of people's nature, regardless of people's religion, naturally they love their children. And we find our souls that we sacrifice so much for our children. We do so much for our children that sometimes we find ourselves giving up almost everything for them. These children are the real flowers of the world. If they smile, it looks like the whole world is cherishful and smiling. And if these children are upset, then you look around you, look at the sun, moon, stars, look at the flowers, look at the gardens, looks that everything is upset. Nothing wants to smile anymore. Nothing means anything to this person anymore. And at the same time, our children also, they know how much they need us. Children always need their parents. Although sometimes they pretend that they don't care about their parents. But in reality, they know that the need they have for their parents, as soon as the child is hungry or thirsty, will try to run to his parents. Whenever the child is afraid of something, or if it's too cold or too hot for the child, or the child is sick, will run to his parents. But history is very amazing. And sometimes brings some very amazing incidents that after reading those, 
You just start thinking how things are working in the world. And here we find a boy in the history. Only eight years old. He was only eight years old when he was separated from his parents. The boy himself says that when I was, I was about eight years old, my mother decided to go and visit her parents. This was a small clan of Bani Tha'laba, called the clan of Bani Tha'laba in Yemen. His mother was from another clan called Bani Ma'an. So she decided to go and visit her parents and the boy says I was celebrating for months. Because occasionally I used to receive gifts from my maternal grandparents, from my aunts and uncles, but I had never seen them before. So I was really happy to go and see them. And as days came closer, each day was looking like a year to me. And finally the day came when we had to leave. And we were leaving to our parents to, for, uh, to go and see my grandparents. He says, when I looked at my father, he was upset. He was sad. I saw the tears in his, in his eyes when he was saying to my mother that please take care of my son because this is the first time he will be away from me. And we left. The father is sad because, is sad because he feels that his son and the wife will be away from him, from him for a couple of months. But he didn't know that it won't be a couple of months for the son to be away from him. He may not see his son for years and years. The boy says, as we arrived over there, I started receiving all the gifts. Everyone comes and gives me something. I went out playing. As I was playing outside of the house, I heard a lot of noise. I started asking people what's going on. It's people shouting and crying. The children that were around me and they were playing with me, some of them said that some other people have attacked us and they ran away. But before I would go anywhere, a couple of people came and they grabbed me and took, them with, took me with them. I knew that now they have captured me. That was a clan called Banil Qayyim who attacked this clan. All of a sudden, and they took whatever they could with them, including this boy. Now imagine what's going on through this boy's mind at this time. Who says, I was thinking that now for the rest of my life, I will live as a slave. According to the time, according to the tradition of the time, as they will get these type of boys, they will make them slaves. And they will be tortured for the rest of their lives. <clears throat> we all know that unfortunately at all the times in the history there are some people if we say about them that if they won't exist will be better for humanity we won't be wrong <coughs> people who are like beasts and to show their power they won't care about others' feelings. And they won't care of what others have to go through. Just think about it. What are you doing when you're picking up this eight years old boy? The mother might get a, have a heart attack. If not that, for sure for the rest of her life she will not be in peace. She may cry for years and years. As when this boy was picked up, his father said some poem some, some years later, saying that every day when the sun comes out, it reminds me of my son and I start crying. And when it sets again, again it reminds me of my son, that I can never forget. Oh my son, please tell me if you're alive so I can look for you. And if you are dead, 
then at least I can comfort myself saying that at least he's not in the hands of those people. And he kept on looking for his son. Those people who took this boy for some money to make some dollars, they didn't know what they're doing to other people's feeling through this. And as I said, always we will have people like that who for their own benefits, for getting a small gain, that will make people cry for years and years. The boy says, they took me. They started torturing me. I told them, I cried, that I'm not from this clan. If you're enemies of this clan, I don't belong to this clan. I belong to another clan that's called Bani Tharaba. Send me back over there to my father. They said, that's not our concern. All we need is to send me some money out of you. We will sell you to another someone else. And go and talk to that person, but we need some money. And at the same time, we want to build a history for our souls. That we capture these many people from that clan to show them that we are stronger than them. We want to prove our strength and our power. And for that, we'll have to do this. Boy, you can cry as much as you want. We can't change these rules. We have to do it. He said, I decided just to have patience. And I knew that now I can do nothing about it. I may never see eight years old boy says, I may never see my parents again in my life and live rest of my life as a slave. God forbid that we even have to think of going through some similar situations. But imagine what people will do to each other. He says, finally, they sold me to a person who was from originally from Makkah Mukarramah. And that person said, his name was Hakim bin Hizam. He said, to that person who was selling the boy, that I would like to buy a good boy because he had a lot of boys. That was his trade, that was his business. He said, I need a good boy for my aunt. She is lonely. Her husband have died. She have decided not to get married again. And therefore I need some good intelligent boy for her. So he pointed towards me and said, buy the, take this boy. And he bought me. He took me to Makkah and went and handed me over to his aunt. Who was that person's aunt? Who was Hakim bin Hizam's aunt? Khadija bin Khwailid. Some months later, Khadija got married. She married to who? Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And as we have talked about in our previous session, after marriage, Khadija said to her husband, everything that belongs to me, it's yours now. Which means including this boy now, this boy went to Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who up to that time, he was known as Muhammad bin Abdullah only because he was only 25 years old and had not received the revelation yet. And I'm sure by now we all know who that boy was. Zayd bin Haritha radiallahu anhu. Who's this Zayd bin Haritha? Subhanallah, this is the boy who in the beginning days before Islam and in the beginning days of Islam was called Zayd bin Muhammad, Zayd son of Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is the boy. That Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam loved him so much that Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhim ajma'een used to call him Hibbu Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam A person who's loved by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Subhanallah, everyone else loves Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and looks for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and here Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sometimes is out of his home What are you doing ya Rasulullah? He says, I'm looking for my boy, the one that I love I'm looking for Zayd, I don't know where he is at. The 
the one that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam loved. A boy whom was killed and murdered during the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam while he was away from Medina Munawwara. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because of the love of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam for that boy did not want any human being to go and inform him. He sent Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam right away. Oh Jibreel, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam is about to go up on the member. Go and inform him that Zayd have been murdered. But oh Muhammad, look at there. And as Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam looked up, he saw Zayd radiallahu anhu laying on a bed in Jannah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went up on the member and informed the Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi wa sallam Jibreel just came to me and informed me that Zayd was just murdered and he showed me his place in Jannah. A boy about whom Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said and the hadith is in Sahih al-Bukhari Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said وَأَيْمُ اللَّهِ إِنْ كَانَ لَخَلِيقًا لِلْإِمَارَةِ I swear by God that he was the most deserving person to be the Amir at all the times. وَإِنْ كَانَ لَمِنْ أَحَبِّ خَلْقِ اللَّهِ إِلَيَّ And he was the most beloved person to me. A boy. <coughs> to whom Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari again. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam once said to him, Ya Zayd, Anta akhuna wa maulana. Zaid, you are my brother and you are maulana, which means you are my helper, my assistant. And here I might just draw your attention to a point. Sometime people object to a word maulana that cannot be called to human beings. Here there is a hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam calling Zaid radiallahu anhu, akhuna wa maulana. You are my brother and you are maulana, you are my helper. And this is the boy about whom Aisha radiallahu anha says, Umm al Mu'mineen, the mother of the Mu'mineen, the wife of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, the hadith is in Musnad Ahmad, that Aisha radiallahu anha said, Whenever Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to send Zayd in any group of people, he would always select Zayd to be Amir. And then she continues to say, and she made a very important statement. She said, وَلَوْ كَانَ حَيًّا لَاسْتَخْلَفَةً If he was alive, if he was alive at the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's death, he would have been the Khalifa after Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Who's saying that? The one who's saying it is daughter of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. She's saying that if Zayd was alive, my father would not have been the Khalifa. It would have been Zayd bin Haritha radiallahu anhu. But because Zayd is not alive, therefore my father was, became the Khalifa. Subhanallah. And here we can tell. Sometime a person feels humiliated. But the honor might be hidden behind, behind those situations. Things look different than what they really are. Zayd thought that he will be a slave for the rest of his life. But in reality, that slavery is the one that led him, that led Zayd to be the leader of all the human beings, to be an example for the people till the day of judgment, and to find his place in Jannah and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, seeing it and informing us that I have seen him in Jannah. Subhanallah, what an achievement. Sometimes these type of incidents just made me, make me wonder that we will go under the ground. I don't know what will happen to us. With everything that we have been doing, I don't know what will happen to us. <laughs> And here we find those people, subhanAllah, they struggled for some time. But it have been, it have been more than 1400 years now. They are having all the comfort over there, subhanAllah. What a pleasant life that these people have now. How much they might be enjoying over there. And they are with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They are not in need of anything anymore, that's it. Anyway, Zayd became slave, was sold to Hakim bin Hizam. Hakim bin Hizam gave him to, as a gift to his aunt Khadija bint Khwailid radiallahu anha. 
And Khadija radiyallahu anha handed over this boy to Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What a lucky boy. But on the other hand, of course, parents are looking for him. The mother can't, cannot sleep during nights. And they spend years looking for him. During that time, when, in one of those years, some people from Yemen, they came to Medina Munawwara. They came to Mecca for Hajj. During Hajj, they saw this boy Zayd. And they recognized him by his look. Are you Zayd bin Harissa? Yes. Are you the one who was captured by that clan of Banu Qayn? Yes. They went back and informed his parents that we found your son. Of course, the father was so happy. He took everything he can, he could with him. All the gold and silver. And went straight to Makkah Mukarramah. Asked about Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He found Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the haram by the Kaaba. Went straight to him and said, Ya Muhammad, please, I have to ask you a big favor. First thing, this is all of my wealth. This is, I sold everything I had and made it into a gold and silver and brought all of this gold and silver from that I, that, that I had in my life. This is all for you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The only favor I ask you to do for me is please give my son back to me. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam looked at that gold and silver. He started weeping. He said, do you think I would sell your son to you? I'm not that person. I'm not the person who would take this money from you. Let's go back home and talk to Zaid. If he wants to go with you, he's free to go with you. They went back home. As soon as parents, as soon as the father and the uncle looked at, his, uh, at Zaid, they hugged him, they started kissing him, Zaid. Let's go back home. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam allowed you to come back with us. But they say that Zayd, they saw Zayd was crying. What are you crying for Zayd? Come on, let's go. The days of crying are over now. But they were amazed when they heard this word coming out of Zayd's mouth. I don't want to come back. Zayd. Are you going to live as a slave for the rest of your life? Come, let's go back home. You don't know how what your clan have prepared for you. Everyone is celebrating that they will see you back. Your mother is waiting to see you back. Zaid says, I know all of that. I can't leave Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I can't leave him. What happened, Zaid? Is anyone forcing you to stay here? He says, the things that I have seen in this man are forcing me to stay with him. I know I can never find these things anywhere else in the world. And remember, that's the time that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam have not received the revelation yet. And this boy Zaid says that the things I have seen in Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I know I won't find them anywhere else. Therefore, please inform my mother that I'm happier here and I will be happy if you allow me to stay here. Therefore, I don't want to come back with you people. Open the history of the world. Find me examples like this. When people start celebrating different days, that we had a very saintly person, a person with a great performance. Find an example like this. When a person of this kind, who was separated from his parents at the age of eight, and now he has all the opportunity to go back and live with all the freedom, he says, no, I want to live with this man. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as soon as he heard this from Zayd, he took him by the Kaaba. And he announced it over there where all the leaders of Quraysh were sitting. He said, oh people, from now on, I don't want anyone to call this man Zayd a slave or Zayd bin Harissa. From now on, his name will be Zayd bin Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Until the ayahs of Al-Quran Al-Kareem were revealed, forbidding this. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, don't change their father's name. Don't change their last names. That's not 
allowed according to the Sharia of Islam. In other words, if you take a child, if you adopt a child, you are not allowed to misinform the child about, their, about his lineage, about his parentage, and you have to give him the right information, you, we are not allowed to change their names. From there on, of course, they started calling him Zaid bin Harisa. Now, of course, Zaid is upset. Zaid is upset that up to now, people used to call me Zaid bin Muhammad. Now they will call me Zaid bin Harisa. I love Muhammad more than I love my own father, Harisa. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals some ayahs in Quran al kareem where he mentioned the name of Zaid, the only Sahabi of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, whose name is mentioned in Quran al kareem And Mufassirin have explained that the reason his name is there, so that when he, when he was missing, people calling him Zaid bin Muhammad, now at least people till the Day of Judgment will be reciting his name in Quran al kareem Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put his name in a better place. In Quran al kareem till the Day of Judgment, Whoever will recite his name in Quran will get the reward for even reciting the name of Zayd. <coughs> Zayd radiallahu anhu was with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam at all the times. In the eighth year of Hijrah, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sent a person with the name Haritha to the governor of Busra. When that person was coming back, on his way back, he was at a place called Mu'ta, at a boundary nowadays, at the boundary of Saudi Arabia and Syria. The people of Mu'ta killed this Harissa, this person Harissa, the Sahabi of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, of course, Killing the ambassador is inviting a war. He was the ambassador of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sent an army under the leadership and the command of Zayd bin Haritha radiallahu anhu. And that was the time when Zayd radiallahu anhu got over there. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was about to come up on the member and Jibreel alayhi salatu wa sallam came and informed him, Ya Rasulullah, Zayd have been murdered. There is a hadith in Musnad Ahmad. Abdullah bin Umar radiallahu anhu says, During the time in the khilaf of Umar radiallahu anhu, Umar radiallahu anhu was fixing the salaries of different Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi majma'een for the different work that they were assigned. He said, me and Usama were assigned the same work. But my father, Umar radiallahu anhu, gave Usama 3,500 and he gave me only 3,000. Usama is getting 3,500. And Abdullah bin Umar is getting 3,000. Abdullah said, I asked my father, Dad, we are going to be doing the same thing Dad, there is no difference between me and him. Why would you give him more than what you would give me? You are giving him 500 more than that you are giving me. Umar radiallahu anhu replied, Abdullah, don't think that you are equal to Usama because his father was loved by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam more than your, your father. And he was loved by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam more than yourself. And therefore, I'm giving him that extra so people will know that this is a better person than you are. Then he said a word that is really a word that we need to write in our hearts, in our minds. Umar radiallahu anhu said to his son, Abdullah, Abdullah, naturally I have more love for you. But I want to prove to everyone that we prefer the love of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam over our love. And therefore, I give him more than I'm giving you. So people will know the real iman is the love of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and giving preference to everything that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam loved. Subhanallah. These are our examples. These are the people who are really to be used as examples.
and these are our ancestors. May Allah give us tawfiq to follow the steps of these Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi majma'een and allow us to be with them in the akhirah. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa li sa'il al-muslimina wa al-muslimat wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alayhi.